Hey, this is Chris, the Idaho Painter here on Paint Life TV. I'm all the way over in Minneapolis, Minnesota at the United Hardware Show, and I'm surrounded by some tip saver dudes here. So these guys, um, they've got a really cool product. I really like it, and I'm gonna ask them to tell me about it. If you haven't seen it, stay tuned, because you're gonna hear about it right now. We have, on the right, we got Brad, and on the left, we got Matt. And um, so Brad, why don't, we'll just start with you. Sure. Um, what do you, what's your involvement with this thing? Uh, so I'm a career painter. Uh, started back in the early 90s, and through my apprenticeship was uh, trying to retrieve all my equipment out of, uh, pretty much lacquer thinner is what I always use. And uh, I got really tired of dipping my hand in the can and uh, trying to retrieve all this equipment and so I came up with this idea of the tip saver. Yeah so th this is something that I've done for 18 years. So I've been using an airless sprayer and I typically have a gallon can. I take a gallon can, I put about I don't know about two inches a lacquer thinner or paint thinner in the gallon can, throw my tips um, down in the gallon can and we do have an example down here and I just let them set down in there and that way they won't rust, corrode and if there's any paint left in them because the apprentice didn't clean them out um, correctly they're not going to dry out because they're sitting in lacquer thinner but big drawback you got to reach down there and grab them so here's kind of an example right here of a can a gallon can that would have all of our tips and so you've created this device and what does it do so it houses all your tips uh, gun filters and housings all in this uh, I guess you'd call it like a chandelier type apparatus that's interesting to have a chandelier all right cool yeah right and so um, we've got tips We've got um, rat guards and what we, we got some filters in there. Correct. Yeah. 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 So we can take this thing. Um, it comes, I think Matt, oh my gosh, Matt actually has one in his <laughs> really? hand. So Matt, why don't you show us how this thing, because um, it's in a package. It's obviously not assembled. Is it difficult to assemble? Not at all. Very easy. It's uh... Or would you consider yourself handy, mechanical? Well, I, I guess I would, but uh, you wouldn't have to be handy so, mechanically so to put this together. But you got an advantage because you're handy and mechanical. <laughs> I, I'm a painter, so take that for what it's worth. So you're a painter too. I, I have also been a career painter, yes. I run a, a small uh, painting company. What's and, your painting uh, company? It's Washi Commercial Finishes here in Minneapolis. Washi. How do you spell Washi? W-A-S-C-H-E. And I think you work for him. I do. He works all right. I so do. there's a connection. So they got the same sweatshirt, they got the same product, and um, Matt works, or Brad works for Matt. Yes, indeed. All right, so show us how this thing assembles. Sure. Well, inside the package, there's assembly instructions on the back of the, uh, on the, back of the display card. Do you need uh, instructions to assemble it? You really don't. Uh, that's for the people who have no mechanical ability yeah, whatsoever, I suppose I, we I'm a non-instruction guy. Um, I are guy, guys, I'm only one, so guy. Um, I opened it up, I assembled it right off the bat myself without reading the instructions because I didn't even know there was instructions in the package. All right, so let's... That was part of the design process to make it so easy that you don't even need our instructions. So should you throw this away? This is the handle. Oh, okay. That's, they all come... I've Obviously the tip saver comes in multiple pieces, but they all are very important. Nothing gets thrown away. It also comes with what is that for? These is tip that saver the stickers. Holes or these actually go on the outside of your paint can oh, that you're you. store your tip saver in. That way your apprentice on the job site doesn't throw your tips in the garbage when you're not looking. He knows, you know, that there's something in there. That's a very good point because I had no idea. I thought these would like I would put them on my car or something like that. But what I typically would do is I would write tips on my can now mm -hmm. you don't have to go hunt down the sharpie or marker or tape you just stick tip saver on there now you know your tips and your tip savers in the can great and point. it comes with one for the lid and one for the side of the can so awesome. there's no mistakes there so that's what the stickers are for so tip saver is pretty self-explanatory if you look at the pieces and you look at the outside of the package a quick glimpse will show you that that it's uh, pretty easy to put together comes with a center column that can only go together one way. The uh, the plastic is molded so that it, it can only go this way. If you try it together the other way, it's not gonna go. You're gonna have a problem with that. So there's a center column. So assembly for dummies. Yes, exactly. Okay. There is a platform in the center column that allows you to drop your housings down into the column once the tip saver is assembled. That platform has to go towards the bottom of the tip saver. 
So one there sets. is a, there's an upside down and a right side up, basically. Which, if you get that wrong, you'll know right away because your filters aren't going to go into the column. Yep. And it's as simple as taking the column back out and reinsert it the correct way. Next step is to install the top plate, and you're now ready to put tips and housings and everything in. Last thing you want to do is put your handle on so that you're not going to have to submerge your hand in the, in the solvent to get them down in there. It's as simple as that and the tip saver is ready to go to work. There you go. Um, assembly, fast and easy. So when I think you guys sent me these, you know, a couple of them a long time ago and I got them and the first thing I said is that ain't going to work because I'm going to stick it down into some reducer 54 or something, let it set in there and I'm going to come back the next day and it's all going to be melted and the plastic is going to be sitting in the bottom of the container. I was like, this isn't going to work. It needs to be metal. So um, what's unique about this plastic? That's Is it going to melt and be at the bottom of the can? It is not. We actually day? thought about that problem, right? And uh, this is made of HDPE, high density polyethylene. So it's very solvent resistant. Um, we've tested it with just about every solvent you can purchase in the paint store. Uh, we're well over a year into our testing. Um, hasn't touched it at all. Everything is still upright, very stable. So uh, we're confident that this will hold up to just about any solvent that you would put in there. Um, there's something I learned to just today about this product and uh, you can hold that yep. one. Um, it's not too heavy for you, is it? I think I can handle it. Okay, he can handle it. So I'll just take off um, the handle here so I can show you. So we've got um, multiple holes, multiple slots in this thing. I was wondering, and I could have just called them up or emailed them and asked them, but these slots, I was trying to figure out what the heck these slots for and what would I put in there? Because I knew these holes right here, I would slip my tips in them, and I kind of knew these where my guards would go. What are these slots for right here, in case anybody's wondering? Yeah, so through our testing, uh, we must have taken the tip saver in and out of the can a million times because we wanted to make sure it was fully functional in every aspect. So you have your couple inches of solvent in there that needs to drain off before you take the tip saver out because we don't want it leaking all over the place. Um, so those are, are, I guess what you would call maybe like drain holes, gutters, or it dissipates the liquid quickly so that you can get the tip saver out of the can without slopping all over your job site. Yep. So basically they're drain slots. It helps the liquid drain out. Here's another thing. We've got the slot where um, a guard goes in. So the guard slides in right here and it's kind of got these notches. And um, Matt, you know, is what the heck are the notches for? Can well, you tell me? Do you know? The notches are actually where the, uh, the duckbill wings, if you call, whatever you call them, sit down in there so that the housing sits in there securely and doesn't get in the way of you retrieving your tips or filters. We figured out the best placement so that the housing is set down in there securely and not in your way. There you go, there's a rhyme and a reason for every simple little thing on this device right here. So I know um, one of the questions people are gonna ask and um, I think you've been um, presented with this question before. You stick this housing, we'll stick this one, or stick that one down in the can right there. We'll have you do that. It's going to stick down to the can and I, this is how I use the tip saver and I don't know whether this is right or wrong, but I take and I put about, you know, two to three inches of paint thinner and sometimes I'll use paint thinner or lacquer. I kind of interchange them. I'll fill it up about this high and paint thinner and these are sitting down there. I typically don't have, you know, tons of tips in my can, but if you have this thing fully loaded, your tips are down here. I use it so they don't dry out, so they don't corrode. Um, and they're, when I go to use them again, the paint's gonna flow right through them. Well, these tips up here, if you have the apprentice and he doesn't clean this, he pulls it out of the gun, he sticks it down in this can, it's not in the paint thinner. I mean, he's gonna come back and it's gonna be dried out, right? It won't. Uh, that atmosphere in that can is enough to keep everything real pliable, keep those orifices nice and clean. You can just back blow your paint out of there and you're on your way the next time. So you can, it's up to you. Do you want to use two inches of solvent or do you want to fill it up? I filled it up at the beginning and over the years I've drastically reduced the amount of solvent in that can down to about two inches because it's just a really, um, you know, great atmosphere to keep everything pliable in there. 
so so you can I mean it's up to you really I I always just keep two to three inches down here because I'm always concerned about the can somebody pulling off the lid it's sitting out and somebody kicking it over in the vehicles because it's happened um, there's always a reason for a lot of these things when it comes to my painting company and so um, I have two to three inches but if you want to fill it all the way up you can fill it all the way all the way up so Brad Brad's the creator of um, of the tip saver but we have Matt so I mean Matt you have a tip saver jacket on too so mm -hmm. what's your involvement with tip saver you know Brad uh, initially came out with the tip saver I think seven or eight years ago maybe even more than that uh, it was actually about 2007 to 8 okay so 11 wow. years ago plus yeah. wow. uh, and the original version it was basically the same idea and at the time uh, Brad and I had a connection through work and he introduced me to the tip saver and I loved it and our crew uses them we've been some of my guys still use the original version they haven't even switched over to the new uh, revised um, it was a great idea from the get-go and I say uh, maybe two and a half three years ago Brad came to me he was looking for somebody to jump on board with him and get this thing going again um, take it to the next level get research the plastic do the do the things and I didn't hesitate a second. It's a great product. We use it. It works. It, we've proven it in our shop. And I jumped on board with Brad and said, yes, let's let's do this together. All right. So, Brad, how much is this thing going to set me back? Uh, typically, at the retail level, anywhere from $25 to $35, depending on who's uh, selling it. Um, I would expect if you uh, went into most uh, brick and mortar stores that you could pick it up for anywhere from $25 to $30. Are they sold outside the U.S. now? They are, actually. Uh, Sprayman UK has recently picked it up and we're in talks with many other. So it's spreading all over the world. So these things, I know you can get them at paintlifepro.com. So if you're interested in one of these things, go check it out. Our website, paintlifepro.com, where you can get some game-changing tools and you can get Paint Life gear. So there you have it. We've got two great guys, Matt and Pat, or Matt and Brad. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just like my rhyme whatever so i hope you guys enjoyed this video um i gotta get cruising around the show it's been fun it's been enjoyable great product if you guys want to subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of matt and pat or matt and brad hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell that way you get notified next time these guys show up you know on the show we'll see you on our next video Ow.